I will be discussing topic 5-2-B. We will use DNA fingerprinting to analyze the infamous unsolved murder of six-year-old pageant star John Bonnet Ramsey. Our crime scene investigation starts off at the Ramsey family's 1996 Christmas party at their Colorado mansion. The morning after this party, Mother Patsy Ramsey finds a ransom note for her daughter John Bonnet, prompting her to call the police. Following a police investigation, John Bonnet is found bludgeoned to death in the family's basement and four suspects become apparent. Our first suspect is JonBenet's mother, Patsy. As a former pageant queen herself, Patsy showed signs of jealousy towards JonBenet's success. She is also seen as suspicious due to the lack of forced entry at the crime scene and the ransom note's request for $118,000, the exact amount that her husband earned as a raise that year. Our second suspect is JonBenet's older brother, Berkey. It is widely believed that Berkey may have accidentally killed JonBenet while they were playing and the parents covered it up. He is seen laughing and smiling in an interview while he speaks about his sister's death. Our third suspect is the Santa impersonator that attended the Christmas party. He was present at the crime scene, making him a suspect. Our last suspect is the foreign faction who is supposedly responsible for John Bonnet's ransom note. Two blood samples from John Bonnet's clothes and the floor were observed using two different VNTR loci. The DNA fingerprints created by the gel electrophoresis are shown here. These samples were compared to both John Bonnet's DNA and all four of her potential killers. Using these loci, we can observe each DNA sample and theoretically determine who committed the murder since the case remains unsolved. By observing blood sample 1 in our first loci, it is apparent that the blood could belong both to our victim, John Bonnet, or Santa. This is possible due to the matching banding patterns. We can officially rule out the possibility that the blood sample belonged to Patsy, Berkey, or the foreign faction since the banding patterns do not match. Although some bands of these suspects may match our sample, the DNA must match the samples exactly on loci 1 and 2. By observing our second loci, we can see that the banding patterns of blood sample 1 can match the DNA of John Bonnet and the foreign faction. Since Santa's DNA does not match the sample in loci 2, we can determine that the blood does not belong to him. Once we are left with the options of John Bonnet and the foreign faction, we can remember that the banding patterns of the foreign faction's DNA were not an exact match for the blood sample in loci 1. Since the DNA of blood sample 1 matched the DNA of John Bonnet in both loci, we can determine that the blood sample belonged to John Bonnet. Now that we know blood sample 1 belongs to our victim, we can use blood sample 2 to determine our killer. In loci 1, we can see that the banding patterns of blood sample 2 match the banding patterns of both Berkey and the foreign faction. In order to narrow down our suspect to one individual, we will look at our second loci. When we examine our second loci, we can see that the DNA of blood sample 2 matched the DNA of Berkey and Santa. Since the DNA of blood sample 2 did not match the DNA of Santa in loci 1, we can confirm his innocence. Because the DNA of blood sample 2 matched the DNA of Berkey in both loci, we can determine that this blood belonged to him and he can be presumed guilty of the murder. Lastly, we can confirm the relatedness of John Bonnet, Mother Patsy, and Brother Berkey by observing their DNA in both loci. When examining the VNTR loci of children and parents, the child must receive one allele from the mother and one allele from the father. If we look at the DNA of Patsy, we can see that one of her bands, or one of her alleles, is given to John Bonnet. She passes the same allele on to Berkey. In this case, Patsy gives the same allele to John Bonnet and Berkey in both loci. However, this is not always the case. We can assume that the other allele of both John Bonnet and Berkey were given to them by their father.